All right, boys and girls, and welcome back to another building video. Merry Christmas to everyone, if that's something that you celebrate. Hopefully you have a good holiday season. This year has been an amazing year for YouTube, and the Rust career has taken me further than I ever expected it to go. I really appreciate all of you guys and all the support that you give to me in every which way, and I want to give you all a little present by cooking up one of the greatest bases that I have built to date. The Shiver is an absolute beauty. You boys and girls are going to love it. All right, let's jump into the tour of the Shiver. We're going to start off outside a Satori Disconnectable that has got a freehand bunker attached to it. Now, if freehanding is a little bit scary, you can leave it out or you can watch the tutorial to learn how to do it. Bunker opens up from that triangle there and bunker disconnects from that square there. And that's how it all operates. Tight knit, efficient, eight rockets to get inside, store a battery in there, store a locker, store your TC, all that good stuff, whatever you want. Extra eight rockets of protection, very nice indeed. We can run around and you'll see as I point down here, got one more and there's one around the back as well. So three externals in total. If you like building and you're looking to improve, my Discord is a wonderful place to be. We've got multiple great builders, including me, to answer any questions that you may have. An extensive moderator team. And if it's my building style that you like and you don't want your base layout to be visible on YouTube, then you can open a ticket and look into getting your own custom base base design for your own personal use. Cheers Lance, let's go on with the tour. And we'll head in our gatehouse. Back into first person, let's check out the Patrico angles here. We're using the new Legacy wood skin, and it's a little tighter than usual, so you can go for a default grade if you want to open that angle up a little bit more. But these are the nice long wide angles that we're looking for from the gatehouse, really nice here. That breach peak is watching perfectly on our front door, which is nice. And we've got a good mobility in the compound here, assuming that you're off on those turrets that you can see above our compound outpost, covering the compound nicely. We're funneling where we need it, and uh, it's open where we need it. Removing those high walls, you can see that the furnace perfectly blocks, adding an extra five rockets to our compound cost, in case anyone did want to raid from that direction. A couple more bedrooms there, underneath, and we'll open up those walls again to give you an example of what to do in a raid situation. They're going to break those wooden high walls because they're nice and cheap. They're going to be met with a furnace, which is not so cheap. And you're going to play off all of these angles that we have prepared uh, for you to kill the raiders from. Nice and easy. Defend the raid back in with the rockets. Jobs are done. Another long angle here from our compound outpost bedrooms. Just giving you a little view of how far that sees. Easy to hold. Keep control of that compound. And of course, the turrets are going to help you out too from up there. Now, why have we metaled all of this up? Tell me there's not another bunker inside the compound. Very nice indeed. Extra four boxes and of course, honeycombed from the outside to make sure nobody's splashing this accidentally. Store anything you want in here. Of course, it's out in the compound. We have bunkers inside too. This is a tanky, tanky offline raid if you use it efficiently. Let's head in our front door and there's, of course, there's going to be three of those to keep track. And we'll open up these garage doors to reach our shell. Immediately, there's a Patrico staring at the front door. Pretty dangerous for anyone that's trying to come through that door path. Inside our shell, we have bedrooms. We have access to mobility chutes and we have breach peaks. Here's one of our bedrooms here covering us with a roof and we have access to two small boxes there to store some kits and some ceiling mats or whatever you think of. Round to the breach peak, very nice and that's staring right at the furnace funnel which again is where we expect to see players. So uh, very nice indeed and that's up front on the door path and we're not going to spoil that, okay? We're not giving it all away. Alright, but that's some extra mobility to somewhere else that you'll have to watch throughout the tour uh, to get to. Let's open up the rest of the shell just so you get a rough idea of that symmetrical side to it and we have three entrances here and these lead towards starter base now not all three have an option to go into starter base but all three do have an option to go to open core so hopefully that makes sense you can see here we have that patrico and it's watching the front door if i take out these doors once again you'll get an idea of the visibility that we have from this window here are nice indeed beds 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 in this base for the whole team even the farmers get a bed so how nice is that wrapping around into our starter we have lots of airlocks lots of garage doors and of course you can spam boxes on the floor in here if you have the new barrels stick them on the floor to get some more storage but right now i'm trying to maximize tc cost here so that's why it's a wraparound with the less loot rooms but if you have a different kind of egg starter that you like you can swap it out easy peasy no problem at all we'll go ahead and back through our door path and we can wrap around to this garage door now these garage doors there is three of them so you can jump up to oc from three different sides of the shell which is super nice mobility is really important in these larger group bases and straight away we're met with an armored bunker this bad boy is going to be 15 rockets to get into we're going to store our main batteries in here and some of our best loot components sulfur anything else you can think of throw it in there and raiders are going to have a rough time getting in there to that one now to maximize the offline cost once again we've gone for a vault core you can see that the turrets are watching the jump up slash drop down and inside our vault core you can see all these windowed loot rooms and the windows are replaceable by dropping on top of the beds and placing the window through the low wall as i'll demonstrate here just from that angle 
and Glee Belt will place those down. Basically, what this allows for is to keep loot rooms uh, and honeycomb at the same time. In the center, if you don't know what that is, it allows you to drop a nice little Christmas present down from OC into starter, assuming there are raiders in there, or potentially teammates if you want to mess around with the base a little bit. Then we can head up one of our three sides of mobility again into a little central airlock that meets between the roof access and the shooting floor. Again, we can see lots of retakes for this space, lots of retakes for the entire base as well, making sure that we don't lose any of the valuable spots. Here's our shooting floor with some nice stable peaks looking down towards the furnace funnel again, checking for all the downwards angles that we can. And there's a vending machine here too, if you want to sell some things later on. Ramp mobility here is a lot better when you don't use a skin, but where we've got a theme going on here, so that's why I use the skin. But if you make that normal metal, it's easy to run over. There's no bump. Dropping down, you can see the shooting floor is a bit of a ring, uh, and it just consists of dropping through the ramps, taking access of those breach peaks and the downwards angles that we have. And this is where that Shell mobility meets up as well. Very nice. It all comes together. At the center point above the breach peak, guess what we've got? More beds. Nobody's seen it coming. Nobody's seen it coming. There's more beds in the space. There's more respawns. Locker in the center and the beds are coming along with some nice retakes for our shooting floor, making sure we don't lose that. So if anything's blown into here, assuming there's going to be some holes in this area that we're looking at, we're going to be able to retake anyone running around in there because we do not want to lose that. And we now need to rely on retakes more than turrets after the turret nerf. So it's important to have as much of those as possible. Next, we can pop up this garage door and it takes us into a little bit of a center console, which once again, there's retakes, there's beds. Nobody saw it coming. Okay, <laughs> there's... There's a lot in here, all right? Save your sewing kits, all right? No recycling. Nice ankle biters here. And of course, you can pick up that embrasure for some downwards angles too, giving us that bedroom retake and watching the jump up for there. And that's down towards shooting floor in there. So more, more, more retakes. Terrific. If you're wondering why all these garage doors are closed and I just speed ramp them opening, because I picked out all these pretty skins and I want you guys to see them before I open them up, so... That's the thought process there. On roof, we've got some nice angles. We have the angles for far. We have some downward angles too. Of course, head glitches and all that good stuff. Here's our further angles as we look along and the head glitches at the top. And as we move round, we get towards our downwards angles, which is great. And these are looking right at the furnace funnel again, which is ideally where we expect to see some players. And this little centerpiece at the top is for minicopters. If you're not the team that really keep minicopters for too long, don't worry, I've been there. And you can swap that out with more beds or a little bit of a laboratory for cooking mixing tables and things like that. Higher up, we have more bedrooms because why not? And lastly, a little center console, which is definitely necessary up here you're gonna need it needs sleeping bags and sandbags up here it's not just for decoration you're gonna need it hopefully you boys and girls are really impressed with this base and let's go ahead and move on to our build cost and upkeep first of all on screen is the total build cost second up is that build cost into box amounts making it easier for you guys to visualize and lastly is the total upkeep spread between four tcs but the main tc is holding the majority of that upkeep while this base is an absolute banger, I do want to give you guys a proper present too. Face Punch has gone ahead and given me access to three spare DLCs for the new Frontier wooden DLC skin. Now this skin looks absolutely sick. I'm not going to lie, it's banging in this base design. You guys know that looks cool. So if you're interested in getting involved in the giveaway, it's going to be in the Discord down below. And again, thanks to the devs, Face Punch, for sending this my way. Alright guys, let's crack on with today's tutorial. We're going to start off with a egg footprint and we're going to tuck our TC over here behind a window and a single door. Throw your TC down in there, get some furnaces in front and you can slot a loot room right next to it. Adding in a wall to the left and wrapping door frames all the way along, giving us a airlock too. And then we can seal it all in. If you're running out of space in here, just throw some boxes on the ground and that'll do the exact same job. Al has a new event called Howley's $25,000 Holiday Rewards, where you can unbox a free daily case every day in December. Each dollar you bet on Howl for the next month will earn you one ticket for their $25,000 giveaway, being rolled live on Christmas Day. The more tickets you collect, the higher your chances are of winning one of the 50 prizes. They have lots of depositing options that will allow you to play Jackpot, Slots, Live Games, The Wheel, and Blackjack. And remember to use my code SPINKY for a free dollar. Gambling is a dangerous game, so be smart, and thanks for watching. Once again, guys, we're doing the technique here of upgrading the previous steps to metal to help you guys focus on the current build steps. So as soon as something goes to metal, that means it's been covered already. So hopefully that helps to keep the building uh, nice and easy for you guys. Our airlock into our mobility 
comes with a vitrico over here with the bedroom uh, and then the door frame then stops and we're going to leave a triangle foundation out on the right side and it loops along like so instead of me saying do this on the opposite side we've just got symmetry on for just now so you can imagine that everything that we're doing is getting repeated three times we're now doing our multi tc build out which is a couple of triangles and then seven squares out breaking all of that and returning back with our half moons and that's going to give us our multi tc footprint now the confusion unfortunately does not just stop there because our compound outpost has a free-handed bunker so we're going to get some foundations in place and we're leaving everything in twig right now until we complete all of the steps so nobody rush ahead and uh, try and finish it off early build out with a couple of squares and then we can do the compound outpost build out over here we're going to start with the free-handed bunker and we're going to give ourselves some space by breaking everything behind us start by wrapping in this entire bunker add in your shelf just just now couple of frames that we're not going to upgrade just yet make it easy to place that free-handed square and everything else can be upgraded now this can take a couple of tries but ideally what we're trying to do here is clip one side of the foundation in to the three triangles but not the other so the base is connected however the wall uh, can be conditionalized on this left side here so you can see it even takes me a few tries and uh, the stability we're looking for is under 80 percent and we can do a quick check here we want the wall to open up from one side but not the other and that means that we are in the spot then we're going to do a short build out over here to change the uh, square holding up the bunker to a triangle and that will allow us to keep it nice and tight close to the base we'll break one of our squares that we had there turn that triangle in get that square back in position and then lastly a square in the center and that's the build out we're looking for double checking the bunker still working cover up any gaps by activating the conditional like so and lastly there's a gap on that roof and if you get in the weird angle here go from above if above isn't working go from below ensure that bunker stays open and that will mean that your frame is in the right spot once you got it all looking good get everything upgraded including this multi tc footprint over here and we'll link everything up in frames so that nothing's going to decay we want to link everything up together that's our airlock over here and then those other two squares are bedrooms we can add some frames around it in the shell here that are going to stabilize our bunker just above wrap in the bedrooms with a window facing out the way from the airlock just like so and then we can finish off these compound bedrooms here by building out with a triangle square and another triangle giving ourselves our peaks in and around the compound and out towards our large furnace funnel using that half ice shell from inside the bunker to give us our patrico and then of course that's turret spots up there too which is fantastic raise up half height here for the turrets add in these low walls to make the barricades more effective from the outside and we can comb the back of the bunker to ensure nobody accidentally pops this open we'll go ahead and add these triangles in the center here and put a breach freak on there too raising up the middle section here for added stability giving us our frames keeping the base nice and stable and then adding in those ramps that's connected up to main base so you don't need to worry about this side we do need to go back and add an external tc around the opposite side though remember we do have mobility over here so don't rush ahead and seal anything up that whole floor is going to link up into something else we're sealing up the gaps here by using the frames and we're going to need to use both frame and floor there for a little bit of tech later on and again, we have a jump up to more bedrooms, if you remember, in the tour. And we're putting frames everywhere we can for the maximum stability. Then you can just honeycomb this top part here, giving us some spots for boxes. And the gatehouse comes off of here. Just like so. 
and we can go ahead and build that now. With our Batricos. And we can lower all this off, making the furnace funnel more efficient. And we can float a window on either side to make that furnace funnel even more effective. Now, we're probably going to want to connect this over to an external TC. Not sure why we've not done that already. You can rush to this point if you want. Again, we're adding a free-handed bunker on here. If the free hands are not something you love, you can leave them out. Nothing changes in the design. Uh, you're just minus a couple bunkers. Garage doors do the same thing, realistically, if you've got a couple of them. So, uh, if it's not a bit of tech that you're wrapping your head around almost immediately, don't strive for it. It's not essential. But uh, that's what the freehand bunker's looking like. And if you're not loving it, you don't have to do it, don't worry. It doesn't affect the design. And it's just as simple as just not building it. Um, and just having three triangles without any gap. And there we go. Externals are done, put TCs in those, and the high walls are closed up to high walls per gap. And then you can place in your large furnace whenever you have those available. Large furnaces are going to go in from this angle here, up above. And you're just making sure you pull it towards the gatehouse to try and seal up that gap between the high walls. And those are all down, looking very nice indeed. We'll go ahead and add our mobility up into our open core. Start by wrapping in our vault core loot rooms. Adding in the ramp for these. And if these are red for whatever reason, check underneath. Probably means there's some sort of deployable getting in the way there. Add in the windows for the vault core. Wrap it around with a half wall and a low wall. Very important, so you can place those windows. Spot for the ladder hatch in the middle. Ramp for mobility. And you can add uh, your floors on top of your uh, loot rooms. Bringing the shelves out from here. And we'll wall in the bunker too. Save your high wall and get these bunkers armoured up for maximum efficiency off of those. And replacing the triangles exactly as I do with a gap towards that wall there, ensuring that a triangle can open up that wall. Temporarily, it's going to shut while you add in a jump up. And then again, we're going to copy the triangles. There's going to be two different sockets we can choose. And we want the gaps to line up with what I have selected. And there we go. You can add in doors to your vault core to make it even stronger if you want, or you can leave it open plan. And then we can half wall the entire thing in. That extra triangle there is for a turret spot. And we're going to add in these windows here for retakes later on. Half heighting with a triangle here to make that a patrico. And that's our roof exit later on as well. Very nice, very nice. Add a shooting floor exit too. And adding in all our door frames again for that maximum stability. Doesn't mean you need to fill it with the garage door, but add in those frames nevertheless. Over here is our little shooting floor retake bedrooms. These are likely to get missed in a raid, so good ones to stock up. They're not on any general raid path. They're out of the way, so a uh, good one to stock up. Now we can go ahead and upgrade all of that, and we'll drop down to our Breach Peak Mobility. And this is what links up around and outside the shooting floor. So you can add in the Breach Peaks with the roof ramps. Half height that window there. And you'll see we can have a frame and a roof due to the multi-TC. So that's why we placed a frame and a floor there below. A little bit of tech there. And you're just doing the same on this side as well. And that's how that should be looking. Down below, we're going to add in an extra foundation and raise some frames up for our downwards angles that we have in shooting floor. Our airlock can just be honeycombed above. We don't utilize this square for anything here. That's an optional shop in the middle there. You could just have a window. 
But if you think you can use the vendi shop, then of course, slot it in. Then wrap your door frames around your shooting floor, just like so. Add those apples on top, and then on the center kind of hexagon, we can honeycomb half of it and frame the other half, giving us some downwards angles up on roof. There we go. If you're having any issues placing that square, it does not like DLCs. It prefers to be placed around the default skin sets, so keep that in mind. But just join the Discord. There's a few different things that can get in the way of that, uh, and I'll be able to sort it if you're having any issues. Raise up your frames for some breach peaks over here. And we can go ahead and work on the center console too, with some retakes and a locker in the middle. Add your frames as well for that roof exit and half walls to cap everything up and then just floor it in. And there we go. Towards our downwards angles, we can add in some half heights with some frames above and a spot for a turret. And then you can cap off your breach peaks Half walls on the left and right with some frames above to float an extra bedroom above. Finish off those breach peaks and then we can seal up the gap of shooting floor by adding this in here and a bedroom in the middle with some chain link above to hold up a windmill. Once you've done that, you can add a spot for a minicopter in the center. And then we'll get a couple of floating bedrooms above our breach peaks. Go ahead and add those in. Four of those. Nope. And once you've done that, that completes the base design. Hopefully boys and girls have enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please feel free to leave me a like and drop me a comment down below. I really hope you guys enjoy your Christmas, and I really hope to see the space out there on some servers, because it is an absolute bang. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cinebit.